Some of you are complete newbies. <laughs> I don't even know the different parts of a cell wall. So that's what this video is about. Real short and simple. Let's start at the back. Work our way to the front. Here you have the magnet. This magnet is encased with a rubber boot. This is the rubber boot. Mainly a rubber boot is for cosmetic purposes. It look nice. Make you think you paid your money for something. Most of them easy to get off. You can peel them off or you can cut them off. If it's inside the, if it's inside a, a portal enclosure, nobody's going to sit anyway. All right? Now, start from the back. This is the bottom plate. Okay? Between the magnet and the basket is a top plate. The top plate is used to focus the energy from the magnets into the gap. We can't see the gap. The gap, visualizing your mind, is where the voice coil moves back, back and forth around the pole piece. The pole piece is extended from the back plate. So, imagine Visualize the back plate as a piece of metal with a stick. It looks pretty much like this. And the voice coil is over this. Okay? And then you have the top plate, which further focuses the energy from the magnet into the gap. Because remember, your voltage, your voice coil moves by AC voltage. The alternating between the two, alternating current makes it move back and forth. Pretty much the positive and negative. Positive, forward, back, negative, or opposite. I do not know for sure. Okay. So you have your top, you have your bottom plate. Your top plate, which is situated between the basket and the and the top slug. The slugs, this is the magnet. Some have one slug, two, three, four, quadruple. How many slugs? that is comprised of the magnet gives you an estimation of how much force could be generated with the top plate into the gap. Back plate, pole piece. Force coil is over the pole piece moving back and forth. Okay. Now, basket. These are the terminals. This is the tensile leads. Can we see that? The red and black are tensile leads. These are terminals. All right? Then you have the spacer between the spider. The spider is where the cone is where the cone comes in contact with the spider. It's actually called a triple joint. You have the cone, the voice coil coming up. Imagine my hands like this together, okay? Where my forearm is on it, that is the voice coil. The voice coil is comprised of the former and the windings. The windings own the former, so we can hold the shape, goes up through the tensile leads and you connect your current to the terminals. The tensile leads connect to the terminals. The tensile leads come off the force core. This is a passive device. It cannot make base on its own. It must follow instructions. Still working our way from the back to the front. Bottom plate, slugs, top plate, uh, basket, Terminals, tensile leads, spider. You might have one or two. Most spiders, sometimes spiders, it's a stored energy. The spiders help bring the cone back to its resting spot. Okay? The voice coil moves the entire apparatus, the voice coil itself, the former, the cone, back and forth. It moves it based on the alternating current. Farther than his resting point, 
in either direction. And that's where your X Max comes from. Everything that's controlled by the voice coil under the current is X Max. It's linear. It's on the direction. Everything that above that in the X Max is when the voice coil stays within the gap. Because when the voice, the windings of the voice coil stay in the gap, that is your linear X Max. The voice, the, the, the windings never leave the gap. That is your linear X Max. The gap is between the pole piece and the top plate. What sits in between the two is the windings. Top plate, pole piece, windings. The, the windings never extend past the uh, top plate and the pole piece. Everything that stays within that range is linear X max. When the windings protrude farther than the top plate, that is called mechanical. That's your X mechanical. Your X mechanical can sometimes be up twice as much as your X max. Now, what brings it back? And the X mechanical is the suspension, which is the surround and the spider. Those two components contribute to and are the X mechanical. They bring the, the woofer back to his resting point, but it's not under control. As woofer plays over a period of time, over and over again, your spider, and we're talking, if you got a quality subwoofer, we're talking years. Your spider and your surround become so loose that it's not actually bringing it back to where it came off the production line. So your X mechanical will always fail before your linear X max will. As long as you're not clipping the voice cords, your linear X max will always be the same. It's always going to start here and start there, start here and start here. But your ability to bring it back to its original resting point is going to change with your X mechanical because that is on the play by the surround and the spider and over time they loosen, which in turn lower your FS. Right off the box, you're going to have one FS. If you used to get a DAT meter and pull your TS parameters, say, 30 or 60 days after you bought your subwoofer, you will see that most of your parameters have changed. Your FS, the most dramatic, because now the, what's comprised as mechanical has loosened a little bit, but not too, too much. All right? So the triple joints, where the spider, the cone, the voice core form are coming together. That's where they put a lot of beam and CA glue. Then you have your cone, dust cap. What does the dust cap do? The dust cap stops debris, like sand and dust or anything else, forming matter, getting in between, getting inside the gap. Because then you would hear, it would be a scratching noise. That's what the dust cap does. That's one thing the dust cap does. Some manufacturers use a dust cap and the whole design to force air over the coil, over the voice coil itself, over the former and the windings to keep it cool. Uh, a lot of manufacturers do that. I'm not going to name no names because I don't want you to think I'm just loving these manufacturers, but a lot of well-known uh, subwoofer manufacturers use the dust cap for one to keep foreign debris out of the gap and also as a means of cooling down the voice coil. So, here you have very little cone. It's mostly all dust cap, but there's, if you look underneath, there's a cone there, all right? That's this little line here comprises the cone. It just got an over large dust cap because it's a six and a half inch subwoofer. You don't have that much cone, particularly with this one having a one and a half inch voice cord. The former dictates the size of the voice cord. Uh, so you got a one and a half inch form, you have a one and a half inch voice cord. All right. Then you have your surround, various shapes and sizes, and then your mountain gasket, this on top of your basket. This is all cause, it serves a purpose, but all the designs and stuff, is, the purpose is so when you seat the subwoofer into the enclosure, you make sure that you have no gaps. You want this to be, under here, you want this to be as flat as possible. 
pretty thick. So then when the sub seats itself and you screw holes into it, the, this rubber ring serves a purpose. It seals the sub with it to the enclosure. So that is the breakdown of a subwoofer. Play this video as many times as you like. I know some of you are, are complete newbies and y'all, oh, so that's what they mean by voice cord. That's what they mean by tensor leads, push terminals, one and two slugs, top plate, bottom plate. What does it do? Oh, the bottom plate is part of the pole piece. It's used to help as well with the top plate in conjunction with the top plate to focus energy over the gap that the magnetic energy so that your voice cord move back and forth that's it broke down in a nutshell that is what every subwoofer whether it's a six and a half eight ten twelve fifteen eighteen that's what all subwoofers comprise of from beginning to end